so uh, you know, I've been I've been a fan of all of that stuff for over thirty years, and uh, I went off on a mini tangent there because I started thinking about when I when I was a boxing nut, and I was like huge fan of uh, Arguello and uh, um, of, of Arguello, uh, Shirley yeah. Robinson, and uh, you know, like Robinson, I met. You know, he was like in the seventies. I mean, I, I I met him in L.A. and hung out with him at his office, and he had, had a fight in Montreal, and remember the city, and we we're talking. And, I mean, he was probably my biggest boxing. Idol, mm -hmm. um, and to a beat. So, like, I'm so, you know, blessed in the most crazy way that the people that I've I studied intimately, I was able to actually shake hands with and, and talk and develop uh, relationships with um, the MMA world too. You know, like uh, I, I was over in Vegas for a meeting with some guys that are going to publish some uh, books. Finally, we're going to have some books coming out, and uh, Forrest Griffin comes over to the house. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting there, there for like an hour, we're having a barbecue, and then he looks at me, he looks up at me, and he goes, are you Tony Blower, like Tony Blower, the spear Tony Blower? And I'm like, yeah, dude. He goes, oh my God, like, I'm so embarrassed. He says, when I was a cop in Georgia, I was taught your spear system from our defensive tactics guy, and Adam Singer was a big fan of your stuff, and uh, um, it, it was just funny, then we started talking, but it, like, it suddenly occurred to him, holy shit, you know, like I've been... I've been exposed to the same thing when I met with Frank Mir, you know. Mm -hmm. um, hey, Tony, you know, I can't walk into his gym. Hey, you're Blower Spear. I use your stuff at the door when I used to work door stuff. You know, I read about you because, you know, Frank's a huge martial arts knight and I read all the magazines. And so it kind of blows my mind that, that I'll, you know, walk around and these guys, like, know who I am or know, mm -hmm. you know, know about the system and have integrated it. And, and uh, so huge, huge fans. I mean, uh, I, you know, I've, I've trained and showed, I mean, a lot of people remember David Loiseau's elbows. I mean, uh, you know, people don't realize Loiseau and George St. Pierre from Montreal. Well, TriStar was where I taught out of. And I remember when St. Pierre walked in, he wasn't doing MMA. You know, he had his gi on and he was a Kyoko Shikai fighter, uh, you know, coming in to train. And, you know, I remember the first time he saw me, you know, he knew me from the magazines. He bowed to me, mm -hmm. Mr. Lauer, <laughs> you know, like going, you know, I mean, this is like, like a long, long time ago, and, yeah. and I got those guys high gear, and they used to do ground and pound and elbows, and and uh, so uh, you know, I, I mean, I love BJ Penn. I was just with him a few weeks ago. I was out before the Shirk fight. I was out in uh, in Hilo, spending time with him. So I've developed, you know, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard unless you're part of the camp. It's hard to say you're friends with any of them mm -hmm. because they're they're all over the world, right? Um, but. Uh, you know, I do what I can with them. I sponsored a bunch of pros gear. Uh, you know, given them my, my time and my my insight uh, into you know how you would use high gear for ground and pound, how the spear can apply in, in a in a combat clinch, uh, and um, it's fun. I love working with those guys. So yeah, huge fan of, of all of those, and a, and a massive fan of, of MMA and the UFC. And you know, I think I think Dana White is a genius. Um, um, exciting to, to watch the evolution of the fight of the, of the, of the fights and that whole that whole sport okay and just on a side note um, Frank Mir is gonna win on Saturday what's your what's your prediction on that I hope so <laughs> you know some days you're to bug and some days you're to windshield um, yeah. I'll uh, I'll check out the uh, the uh, I can usually tell at the way in mm -hmm. so after we get off I'll check out the way in and and, you know, you kind of look, I look at the body language and I look at the eyes, you know, because, the, you know, the bodies, they're, they're both great fighters. Um, you know, Frank's a realist. If, if, if he uh, gets in the way of uh, Mirko's uh, shin and it's the wrong <laughs> right. part of his body, that, that could be a problem. But it's the same thing for, you know, Frank's got a very unorthodox punching, but I mean, I've done drills with him where, you know, I'm in a ring and he punches me in the arm and I move like four feet, I'm 185 pounds, and I move like four feet and, and I'm eating with my other hand because he just, he hits so hard, it's it's, it's freaky, but you've seen him like when he when he dropped uh, Congo and, and yeah. uh, a couple of the other guys, it's just, it's weird freaky angles, you know, it's from his, his, his martial arts background, he doesn't punch like a kickboxer. Right. So, so, say, so you're going to shoot me an email on your prediction? <laughs> I, I, I always, I always say, and I, and I mean this. I mean, this is how how respectful I am. I always say, I hope for the biggest war, the most exciting fight. I hope it goes every second of every minute for the entire course of it because I just paid fifty five or seventy five bucks or whatever. Right. Um, 
Yeah, but I hope that none of the fighters get hurt and and they continue to to excel as as combat athletes. Well said. You okay. I, I just want to say a great fight. Uh, SPEAR is an acronym for Spontaneous Protection, Enabling Accelerated Response, and it really is, it's the, uh, the study of startle flinch as it relates to fear and violence. So what we noticed watching real videos of real fights, whether it was cops, whether it was soldiers, whether it was, you know, you know phone videos of backyard fights, is that there were always these uh, unsolicited reactive brain responses, which were flinches in the way people, they're not the same as fakes and feints in boxing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you close your eyes, you turn your head, your hands come up, you get off balance. So they were never uh, uh, a tactical benefit to the sport of fighting, but they were a tactical benefit to the survival of not getting hit. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was kind of cool, you know. So I, I watched, we were doing all these sucker punch drills to try and invoke them, but, you know, you can't, you can't flinch on purpose, right? Because right. the flinch is actually spawned by a stimulus getting introduced too quickly. And... Um, so we started videotaping and realizing, holy shit, this had incredible speed. It was it was faster than you could think. So how important was that? If it was if it was if it was a limbic system trigger through the cross extensor reflex that protected your your body mind system from perceived impact because you can fake somebody out and their and their hands would go up. Someone yells, look it out and your hands come up, you know. You don't you don't turn around and get hit with the golf ball, you turn around and get hit with the sucker punch, you immediately you know, go to cover your head. Right. So, um, so we started playing with it. Obviously, we didn't start off with an acronym and then try and figure out a system. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of people that the people who are the marketing side or the uh, the ego side of 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 success and fame and all that. You know, I, I remember people saying to me, "Oh, Blower is just a good marketer," <laughs> and you know, and I'm like, "Really? Okay, cool." You know, then and you know, all of the shit that we do is what down with smoke and mirrors. Um, mm -hmm. The we came up with the, with a spear um, years after we started teaching it as a physical technique. So we had this mm -hmm. this we realized the power of the flinch, mm -hmm. the speed of the flinch. So if someone come at you and fake. We wanted to get our hands out. Now we know okay, cross extensor uh, uh, reflex, uh, extensor muscle, uh, 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 recruit this muscle group, and you know we have a whole scientific measure. Of, proprietary drills of how we teach it and how you can do it so that's more Pavlovian or classic conditioning and um, but we used to call it you know we'd be in our combat stance because we recognize that that you know if you're driving in a rainstorm do you want tiny little wind, windshield wipers do you want big windshield wipers mm -hmm. well you're gonna fucking die if you have tiny windshield yeah. wipers so in, in, in the in the martial arts world when you're trying to grab things with your finger or parry things or you know you know, grab a punch or hit a nerve here and do, and going, well, that's, that's as an analogy or comparison, that's like having little windshield wipers that you also have to maybe control which raindrop you hit. Mm -hmm. Well, someone figured out, you know, a bunch of rain's coming at you that you just want to do this. And so, you know, um, you know, we said, hey, you know, this is your windshield wiper. Your forearm is a tactical crowbar. Mm -hmm. And it's a ta tactical hockey stick, cross check, depending on how you use it. Um, and so, you know, we weren't the first people that said use your elbow, use your forearm, but what it was, it was the connection to start a flinch conversion, the kinetic energy, the speed and reliability to start a flinch that allowed us to uh, get get in and intercept stuff. So the first, first spear was teaching somebody that if a shot came at me, that what I wanted to do is move in and keep my head inside the shape of this spearhead mm -hmm. here. And so it was more of an iconic relationship, be the spear, be the tip of the spear, that's the warrior metaphor too, true mm -hmm. warriors are the tip of the spear, but don't have your head like this, have your head like this, so when someone goes, oh shit, we knew people did the turtle anyways, right, you look at yeah. any hockey fight, oh, you know, head comes down, schoolyard fight, someone grabs your hoodie, goes to punch you, the head comes down, arms go up, mm -hmm. so... So what we did was we said be inside the spear. Well, when we were working years ago, was, uh, we were doing a gig with uh, Naval Special Warfare at Coronado, and the military guys who love acronyms said to me, "Because we're going, okay, let me show you the spear now." Mm -hmm.